Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here with .NET New Corporation. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can upgrade .NET Nuke via FTP. So the process of performing the upgrade is to go ahead and back up your website and database. Now we've done that in a previous video. Then we need to go out and we need to disable the website. So we're going to use an app offline file, which we've also discussed in previous videos found in our video library. Then we're going to modify the web.config file. Now what we're going to do there is we're going to set it so that auto upgrade is set to false. That's a setting that we want to control. We don't want the upgrade to fire off before we're ready. Then we're going to take the upgrade files for the next version of .NET Nuke and we're going to upload those over our website. After that, we'll enable the website by either removing or renaming the app offline file. And then we'll call a specific URL that will fire off the upgrade process in DNN. So we're going to do all of this with a .NET Nuke version 5.6.1 Professional Edition website. And if we go ahead and log into that website, I'll log in as the host account. And we'll take a look at the information uh, to show that it is currently version 5.6.1. So we can find that by either navigating to the host extensions page or the host settings page. So we can see it's 5.6.1 Professional Edition. Now, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and connect to our server using FTP. And I'll go ahead and reconnect here with a connection that's timed out previously. And what we'll find there is within my server on the right side, I can navigate down into the files for DNN. Now, what I'm going to do is browse into the www root folder. And I'm going to pull down a copy of the web.config file. I'm going to pull it into a temporary directory on my computer. Now also within that temporary directory, I have the app offline file. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that into our site. What that effectively will do is take that existing site and disable it. Now because the app offline file is empty, it returns this 404 page, but you can, you can manage that by putting some content into that, uh, that particular file. So our website's disabled. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to modify that web.config file. I'm going to make that auto upgrade change. So my local file system, I'm going to go into the directory where I downloaded that file. And I'm going to go ahead and edit the file. Now I'm just using Microsoft's notepad. And I'm looking for a setting here called auto upgrade. And I'm going to change the value of that setting to false. I'm going to save the change. Close the file. And then I will immediately go ahead and upload that file back to my server. That way, and it's going to overwrite, that way it's there and I don't have to worry about it in a few moments. So now the next step is we need to go and we need to get the files for the upgrade. Well, I've previously downloaded the .NET Inc. Professional Edition 5.6.2 upgrade package. It's a zip file it's sitting here on my desktop. I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to choose properties. Within the properties window, I need to make sure there is not an unblock option. And it's not there, so I don't have to worry about it. If there was, I would click on the unblock button. Now we're going to go ahead and extract the contents of that zip file. Now I'm just going to extract them for now into a temporary folder inside of the temp directory. If I go ahead and hit extract, Windows will go through the process of extracting the files. Now I'll pause the video while that extraction occurs. So once that extraction occurs, you can see Windows goes ahead and opens the files from the upgrade package, but I'm going to go ahead and close that folder. Now if I go back over here to, to my FTP window, what we want to do is we want to take the contents of that folder that we just extracted. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do a refresh by pressing F5. And you can see inside of my temp directory on the left side, this is my local view, I have the upgrade package. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate into that. Now what we need to do in order to get these files into our .NET Nuke website is to take all the contents. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose upload. It's going to go through the process of uploading and overwriting all of the existing files. Now it doesn't replace the database. It doesn't replace the logos that you've used or the skins that you've used. It's only replacing the files necessary for an upgrade within DNN. As long as you haven't made any core changes then you don't run the risk of losing things. But there is a reason why we did a backup in a previous video, just to be safe. So here we want to go ahead and apply this override action to all of the files. And hit OK and let the process occur. So it's going to take a few moments while it uploads all of these files. And I'll pause the video for that as well. 
So once that upgrade's complete, if we still try to hit the website, we're not going to be able to hit the website because we still have it disabled with the app offline file. Now typically what I, do, I would do is I could come in and either delete that file or I can actually just rename the file. If I add a .sav or a .1 on the end, that changes the extension and that will disable the app offline file. So if we go back to our website now, we try to hit the home page of the website. Now I've got Internet Explorer here, so it's bringing up a cached version. If I hit Shift Refresh, what we're actually going to get now is we're going to get an under construction message. And that's what people are going to see until we perform the upgrade. And it's because the upgrade isn't firing off automatically. So to, to fire off the upgrade, we need to go to install slash install.aspx and then question mark mode equal upgrade. And that's going to fire off the upgrade process. And the reason it's doing this, or the reason it's waiting for us to do this, is because we set auto upgrade equal to false. We want to see the upgrade steps. We want to see the response and the messages. If there's any problems, then as an administrator, we can go and either try to restore the existing site or try to fix those problems. Had we not had auto upgrade set to false, if anyone else had hit the website before we did, that upgrade process would have fired and they would have seen this message. So once the upgrade's complete, we should see green success messages everywhere, except for a couple lines that don't have any messages after the black text. And then we can go ahead and click on the link that will take us back to that portal. And once we go back, we'll go ahead and we'll go to the host, host settings page again and verify that we're running .NET Professional 5.6.2 and verify that the upgrade fully completed. Now, at this point, you would probably want to back up your website again just to make sure you have the latest version of everything backed up. So we can see we're on the home page here. We'll go ahead and navigate to the host host settings. And check the version number that shows up there, and we can see we're on version 5.6.2. So we've gone through and we've successfully upgraded .NET Nuke via FTP. I would encourage you to check out some of our other videos. You can find more information about our training under the Resources tab, going to the training page. There we have a variety of free videos, as well as information about our instructor-led training and our custom on-site and online training offerings. Again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.